Hi, I'm Alex Jordan from Long Color Grading and FilmSimplified.com and today we're going to be taking a look at the different methods to control saturation and resolve. Uh, some are conventional, others are less conventional. So let's start. FilmSimplified.com the first method to increase saturation is to simply use a saturation controller in primaries wheels. Yes, I did count uh, increasing saturation using the standard saturation method as one of the uh, methods, yes. Let's reset. The next method is color boost. Again, this is something you all know, and you can do that using the color boost controller here to the bottom left. There are many differences between uh, saturation and color boost. Uh, they've been discussed in thousands of videos. However, for now, let's simply discuss the two most important differences really fast. To illustrate the difference, let's take a look at this image here. So I'll start by making the image yellow. So I'll just push the controllers a bit towards yellow, and then I'll start with saturation. I'll increase saturation, and notice that when I increase saturation, I'm simply adding more of the yellow color that we added to the image. So we're simply making the image more yellow or more orange in this case, it just adds more of the same colors. However, let's reset saturation and now let's increase color boost and take a look at the sky. We're re-accentuating the original colors of the image. So notice how the blue here popped out back uh, in the image when we increased color boost because color boost simply boosts the original colors of the image before any changes. However, if I go back to saturation, increase saturation, notice that the color of the sky is still a bit orangish. So whenever you perform certain changes in color wheels, for example, if you increase saturation, you're adding more of the same effect that we added. However, if you use color boost, you're getting some of the original colors back. You're pushing some of the original colors through the changes you made. So that's the first difference. Now let's take a look at another difference between saturation and color boost. Notice this image here. I'm going to increase saturation and it's what you would expect. We just increased whatever colors we have and we did not increase the separation between the different colors. Let's reset saturation and now I'll use color boost and notice this area here. I'll make the image full screen. Notice the differences between the uh, brown areas and what looks like the blue areas in the rock here. How more accentuated they are. The difference is really clear now. However, let's just get out of full screen, reset color boost, increase saturation. I'll just add one more node, increase saturation even further, make it full screen. Yes, we do have the difference. If the image looks way more natural, I would prefer this look. But from a technical standpoint, if I select these two nodes, add a new node and increase color boost, notice how the difference between the colors is more clear. I know that the difference between uh, uh, color boost and saturation is, is one of the most heated debates. Uh, so I'm just waiting for the comments uh, on this video. Just a reminder, within the next week, uh, we're starting our holiday uh, deal this year. You'll be able to get our full uh, Ultimate DaVinci of course, bundle with all of the extra stuff that come with it uh, for a big discount. I would say in five days, I'm not sure. The next method is something we discussed in a previous video, like a couple of weeks ago, I guess, where you right click on the node, go to color space and select HSV. So the HSV color space. And now I'll simply click on green here so that I'm only controlling the green curve and I'm going to pull it from the middle and we're increasing saturation. As discussed earlier, the point of this method is to simply increase saturation without increasing the brightness of color. So this is a way to get the deep saturation effect where it's saturated without increasing brightness. And the second method is pretty similar. I'll right click, go to color space, but this time I'll select HSL instead of HSV. And again, I'll click on green here in curves to control the green curve. And now I can increase saturation to crazy levels. It's very easy for me to add a lot of saturation to the image. Note that this method is not super controlled. Uh, it kind of introduced a lot of artifacts and weird saturation. However, uh, it can be used, but not super recommended. Then let's move to a hue versus saturation. And this is simply a curve that allows you to control uh, the saturation of certain colors. So for example, I'll click on this dot here to control yellow. Notice all these yellow areas here. So the dot in the middle controls the saturation of yellow without affecting any of the other saturation levels in the image because these two dots that were created to the left and right of yellow prevents the changes I do to yellow from affecting any 
of the other colors. And then I can click here, for example, to control blue. So notice that this dot here is on top of blue and I can increase the saturation of the sky. You notice the sky here, the colors, uh, without affecting any of the other colors in the image. So I can reduce saturation of yellow while increasing the saturation of blue, for example. Let's reset. The next curve is the Luma versus Sat curve. You can open this curve by simply clicking here. Uh, now what's happening here is that this part here represents the different brightness levels of the image. So the dark areas are on the left and the bright areas are on the right. And this line here controls saturation, which simply means that I can reduce or increase the saturation of the dark parts of the image without affecting the bright parts of the image. So notice if something is bright, we're simply reducing the saturation or, and we're increasing saturation of the dark areas and we can control many points in between. So let's reset, for example, and simply increase the saturation and the bright areas without affecting the dark areas of the image. Notice that these areas here are in the dark, so I can increase or reduce their saturation independently from the bright areas of the image. Let's reset. The next one we have is saturation versus saturation. And this is the best name for an effect ever, saturation versus saturation. Now, what it does is pretty simple. It controls the saturation of the colors in the image based on how saturated they are. Yeah, so again, this area here represents different saturation levels. So the point on the left controls the areas that are less saturated, and the point on the right controls the areas that are very saturated. So this simply means that, for example, I can control this point and bring down the saturation of the areas that are very saturated, while using this dot here, increasing the saturation of the areas that are undersaturated, essentially uh, equalizing saturation in the image. Uh, and you can experiment with this effect, but that's all what it does. It controls the saturation of different areas in the image based on how saturated they are. Let's reset. Now I'll switch from curves to color warper. The color warper also controls saturation and the further away this dot from the center, the more saturated this color is. So I can reduce saturation or increase saturation of blue, for example, and this is for cyan. So if I bring these two dots here, now take a look at the sky, it's completely black and white. Let's reset and now we have blue sky again. This also means that if I control like the low saturated blue colors, so which means this dot here and pull it away from the center, I'm increasing the saturation of blue. Of course, this footage is highly compressed, so you can see that we're introducing a lot of artifacts, but I mean, this is the point. So this is a different way of controlling saturation. But note that in uh, the color warper, if you move the points left or right, you're changing the hue. So it's always important to keep an eye on trying to control the point without changing its axis, because this will change the hue of the point. And that can be done in a very simple way. You simply select the point. So I'll click here to select it. Now it's orange, which means it's selected. And here I have a dedicated saturation control that simply changes the saturation of this point without changing its hue. So let's reset. One more thing. In order to control the colors in a more creative way here, or to compress the colors, we also discussed this in a previous video, I can click on one of the points in the middle. Actually, let's select uh, a piece of footage like with higher quality. So this one, for example, uh, and I'll just click here. So I selected one of the points inside. Okay, so this is uh, one of the points with less saturation. As we discussed, if you control this point, you're controlling controlling a very saturated magenta. And if you select this point, even though it's still on the magenta line, but this is the less saturated area. So I'll click on this point. Then using this controller here, I'll click it. And what this will do is that it will select all the points on the same ring. So now we selected the less saturated colors in the image. And then I can simply increase the saturation of all the colors, essentially increasing the saturation of the less saturated area or the least saturated areas and you can see what is this doing to the image and as we discussed in a previous video this is extremely beneficial if you want to get this oversaturated look without the image being really oversaturated that video goes more in depth into that but um, what you're essentially doing here is that you're compressing the saturation of the image and this is how you increase saturation in the color warper let's reset the next method is to simply switch to the uh, RGB mixer and increase all the channels. So if I increase the blue, the green, and the red, we essentially increase the saturation of the image. Take a look at the image before these changes and after, before 
and after. And I got a comment the other day of someone asking me, how do you do the before and after uh, thing? Uh, if you click on this button here, uh, this will show you the image without any uh, effects at all. And if you click the button again, it will simply activate the uh, color effects. And if you wanted to disable a particular node, all you need to do is to click on the nodes number. So I clicked on one here, back to the original image, and I'll click and back to the uh, image with affected by this uh, node. So this was the RGB mixer, let's reset. Next we have the HDR wheels. In the HDR wheels, every single wheel have a dedicated saturation control, which will control the saturation of the range that is being controlled by this particular wheel. And if you're wondering which parts of the image are controlled by this particular wheel, for example, all you need to do is to long click on this icon to the top left of the wheel and uh, Resolve will show you which parts of the image will be controlled by this wheel. So let's click here and you can see which part I controlled by this wheel. One more way is to simply move the controller around and you will see what parts of the image are being controlled by this wheel. So using these saturation controllers below the wheels, I can control the colors of the areas that are controlled by this particular wheel. Let's reset. And then we have uh, the global wheel to the right, which also has a saturation controller that controls the saturation of the entire image. Then we have a weird way of controlling saturation, which is using contrast. And there are two ways to do that. Note that in the uh, primaries wheel, so I'll just come here to primaries wheel, if I increase contrast, contrast, the contrast effect in primaries automatically increases saturation. So whenever you introduce contrast, you're automatically increasing saturation. That's the first way. However, now if we switch to the HDR wheels and increase the contrast, note that the HDR wheels are designed to increase contrast without increasing saturation. So when you increase contrast here, you're not going to be increasing saturation. However, if you reduce contrast, so if you take contrast down, you are increasing saturation. That's because the uh, contrast effect here is overcompensating. It's basically trying not to affect the saturation whenever it increases contrast, but this means that it will overcompensate in the other direction. So whenever you reduce contrast, it will just leave saturation where it is, which will increase saturation. I hope I said that right. So I'll simply reduce contrast here, essentially increasing saturation. You can't see it now, but if we add a new node and then in the new node, we increased, uh, you know, the brightness of the image we corrected, note that we increased saturation in the image. Notice how saturated the image now is. This is something to keep in mind whenever you reduce saturation when using the HDR wheels. And there is one more trick here where we can simply go to color presets. And here you have the option to add chroma light effects, chroma dark or chroma light and dark. So for example, if I select this one for chroma light and dark, uh, actually, you know what? No, I'll just reset this, I'll delete this node and add a new node. And then I'm going to go to color presets, chroma light and dark. And what happened here is that uh, Resolve added a qualifier where it selected both the dark and the bright areas of the image. So if we click here on this button to see what's being selected, notice that these areas are the ones that are being selected. So these are the dark areas and these are the bright areas. And what Resolve did is that it automatically set the saturation to zero. Let's move to this image, which will make this more clear. I'll simply go to color presets, chroma light and dark. And notice what happened here. Uh, simply resolve uh, selected the bright areas and the dark areas. If I click on this button, I can see what's being selected. Uh, these areas are dark and these areas are bright. Then resolve set the saturation to zero. I'll click back here to disable highlights mode. And it notice that I can control the saturation of the bright and dark areas independently from the rest of the image because resolve automatically added this qualifier that selected bright and dark in order to reduce their saturation. I guess these were 10 different methods. I'm not sure you can count them, but uh, I hope this was helpful. As usual, if it was helpful, uh, please visit us at filmsimplified.com where you can join our free DaVinci Resolve crash course that is designed for the absolute beginner and will take you through every tab in Resolve. Thank you. Filmsimplified.com